back to West Texas View. Before the break, we were talking about the mission, and we haven't really gotten a lot into the history. We're going to do that more this segment. But before we do, I want to talk a little bit, Rachel, about how you and the Midland Chamber of Commerce coexist or cooperate. Well, you know, we support one another. Uh, at the end of the day, both organizations are here to promote our city uh -huh. and, and, and to, the, you know, to prosper it uh, economically, uh, tourism wise and so I serve on several committees at the, on, on a few committees at the through the CVB and uh, I participate with the with the Midland Chamber we have joint mixers together um, I refer if somebody joins our chamber I recommend that they join them join the Midland Chamber uh -huh. so it's not us and them uh -huh. it's a we uh -huh. we work together for the uh -huh. betterment of our community uh -huh. so we have a great relationship uh -huh. with Bobby and his team and and I mean uh, yeah, a lot of people think and we <coughs> separated because we couldn't get along. That was not the case never. at all. It no. was never the no. case. Uh, and and going back to the very first history part, the the as I remember it, and correct me if I'm wrong, it was because you wanted to make sure that there was an identity to um, a whole group of business people that didn't sometimes feel as if they were being heard. Their, their uh, needs were sometimes so different because they were focused to a, a specific target audience. And so just to meet some special needs was the whole reason that, that Absolutely. was organized, not because this group of people didn't like this right, group of right. people. No, and it was so never, never that way. One, two church, one church divided into two churches right. in situation. <laughs> and so let's go back and talk a little bit about the history. So 31 years ago, 31 years. you um, had this group of people that, that believed in, in what the mission could be, and, uh, and, and they were a strong group of people. I remember I, I remember even Zertucci and uh, mm -hmm. some of the ones that were paid staff, but these visionaries that were not paid staff no, members not. that just worked their heads off and went around and got so many people excited about this. And so you started in borrowed spaces in somebody's office. Somebody's office. And yeah. then what happened? Uh, Cito Sanchez, who was also one of the founders, and uh, he owned a lot of property in town. And so he converted one of the duplexes into a small office, uh -huh. and the, which was on La Mesa Road in Parker uh -huh. Street, Parker and Nobles, I believe, between those two streets. And uh, the chamber was there for many, many years. Uh -huh. And then about 12 years ago, uh, George Veloz, with, um, uh, w which is one of our members, called us when the chamber was in the process of trying to build our own building because we had outgrown uh -huh. the area we were in. And you'd in. already envisioned the incubators and... Yes, we were going to do a 5,000 square foot building, start with three incubator offices and, uh, you know, see that program start through there and, and have three incubators at all times. And so George Veloz called us and he owns the Jorge's restaurants. And so he pretty much said, you guys want a building? You know, and we're like, what? You know, and so uh, we went down to look at the building, and it was a 10,000 square foot building, and we were like, oh my God, what are we going to do with such a building? So we renovated the building, we went back to our donors and let them know, you know, we had some money come in already uh -huh. that, you know, we were getting this building, they told us keep the money, and we're going to, you know, so you can renovate uh -huh. your building. And it was at 208 South Marion South Marion Field. Marion Field. Yes. And so uh, we did that. And like I said, our members, our corporate members were so generous. Um, Wells Fargo pretty much furnished our entire building oh, for us. Gosh. Yes, it, we were mm. so blessed as to how the community oh. stepped up and helped us. Uh -huh. And so we started our incubator uh -huh. program. We have 22, 22 offices. spaces. That means 22 budding uh, business yes. uh, entities mm -hmm. are getting their start there. You're teaching them. Uh, we don't have time today, but 
I'm going to ask you to come back, and I want you to walk me through a process of okay. that. But in the meantime, <coughs> so you, by this time, you had become the um, executive director? I came, I became the CEO 10 years ago. Okay, years so, ago. so you had already moved into the building? We had already moved into the building, and, okay. and Bo Sertucci was the, the CEO at the time. Okay, <coughs> and so then you have grown to 450 members. As you said, some of them have dual memberships mm -hmm. in with uh, the Midland uh, Chamber. Midland and Chamber. Uh, is there any that have memberships with other communities? Yes, there's some. I mean, I have members from Odessa. And so I know they're active with the Odessa Chamber and uh -huh. the Odessa Hispanic Chamber. Uh -huh. And then they're active with the Midland Chamber. But then and you us. were one of the ones that helped get the Odessa? We Hispanic. have helped actually quite a bit of chambers get started. I remember when mm -hmm. Mr. Joe Molina came into our office, I was at the chamber at the time, and they wanted to start a chamber in Odessa. Uh -huh. And so uh, our director at the time, which was Elvia Hernandez, helped them start uh -huh. that, uh -huh. that chamber. Yeah. Uh, we helped Fort Stockton, and, and when their chamber was used to be active, uh, Monahans had a chamber. Uh -huh. um, we also Hops. helped I Hops, Hops, New Mexico start their chamber. Uh -huh. I'm currently uh, talking with uh, some community members in Lubbock to help them start their oh Hispanic gosh. chamber back I'm up. I'm surprised they don't have one already. They had one and, and, and they merged with the Lubbock chamber and it just, I guess it hasn't been working out. Mm -hmm. And so they want to go back and you know reopen mm -hmm. their chamber. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is you can walk in some of those and you'll say, wait a minute, I'm, I'm back in Midland because they've copied you so yes. much. Yes, <laughs> yes, and, and, and to us that is just uh, a compliment. Flattery. Absolutely, oh, yeah. it's very flattering. So <laughs> it's, it's uh, and, and that's something like you, well, you know, I was saying to you earlier, is that I am very good at bragging on our members, uh -huh. you know, and I will promote our members left and right. But when it comes to us, a lot of people don't know uh -huh. that that's what we do, you yeah. know, and so. And, and what an effect it's having on our business community. We're going to have to close this program today, but we're going to ask her to come back and be on the program next Sunday because we've got a whole bunch more to tell you. So we'll see you next Sunday and continue this conversation. See you then. Thanks for joining us for News West 9's West Texas View with Johnny Lou Avery. This has been a public affairs presentation of KWAB-TV and KWES-TV.